Unless you have a tricked out Segway with flames and gold plated rims, like the CEO of Monster, gyro balanced scooters just aren't very badass. They might be practical to ride, but you wouldn't actually want to be seen riding one. Until now. So the Rhino looks like you have to be an athlete. Truth is, you, you don't have to be because the technology takes care of it. But the impression of being so smooth as you're riding around this thing creates this cognitive shift for people that I want to be that person. What Chris Hoffman has developed is ripped straight from the realm of science fiction, a rideable one-wheeled motorcycle. It sort of asks just enough of who you are to like you have to pay attention. It's like riding a snowboard or a skateboard, but it's actually not as hard and it's not a kind of thing where you, you wipe out on it. So how does a robotics engineer from the auto industry come up with this idea? Uh, my daughter and I, she's age 13, riding out to go fishing. And uh, out of the silence she says, hey daddy, I saw this one wheeled motorcycle in a video game. You know, could you actually build that? It's funny, at the time we were looking for like daddy-daughter projects to work on. And, <laughs> and the bike that started from a child's imagination is now in production and for sale. It's, it's basically two scooter motors uh, that are spinning at a really high RPM, which makes it very reactive. So as far as it being, it's as solid as a rock. The design uses gyros to stay upright, like a Segway, but with a few upgrades. But we decided to put 2,000 watts of power into this thing. But with all that power, the ride is still smooth and gentle. Top speed is limited to 10 miles an hour to make it legal to ride on the sidewalk. But that might just be for the best. Definitely, yeah, it takes a little bit of a uh, little, little getting used to. As you would expect, there's a bit of a learning curve when you first get on the Rhino. It took me about 20 minutes to get comfortable on it. It maps right to your muscle memory on how to ride a bike. So I get on it, I've got handlebars, I've got a brake. You know, I lean forward and it goes forward and I stop and it steers kind of the same way. It's not exactly the same way, but software is written in a way where it actually talks to your own sense of balance as opposed to being something you're piloting. It's just very, um, you know, aware, you know, when you're riding it, which is it's the entertainment value. But the Rhino isn't purely for entertainment. Police officers who've tried out the Rhino see it as a versatile alternative to patrolling on foot. Turns out uh, it's awesome for them because they can get on it and they can get off of it. When they stop, you put your feet in the ground. If I want to run somebody down and grab them, you know, you can't get off of a Segway scooter while it's rolling. You know, this, so I'm going, oh, so you discover an attribute that you never really thought about you know, on the drawing board. And you ride around downtown and you go, I wonder if I could take it on the train, you know, is that a problem? And you go on the train and nobody says anything and the conductor walks by and says, is there gasoline in that thing? And you say, no. And, Oh, all right. While riding this prototype around Portland, Oregon in 2012, Hoffman drew a crowd wherever he went. And his YouTube video of that adventure has been viewed over 10 million times. With all that buzz around the Rhino, orders are coming in from all over the world. And the first bikes will be shipping this spring. Rhino Motors is also setting up a dealership network in the United States, so anyone can come in and try out the Rhino.